Morning. Morning. Coffee. Coffee. Hey everyone, this is Phil here from Northern Wild Harvest, and today we're going to be going and scouting a high elevation burn off the side of the Klondike Highway. This burn is mostly up in the hills. It's located about a kilometer from the highway itself to the little flat, and then it goes way up into the hills. So we're gonna go check that flat, and then if that looks good, we'll hike up the hill. If the bottom doesn't look very good, we're not sure if we'll go up the hill, but we need to go get eyes on it and see what it's looking like. I'm gonna be going with Alex and Alec and Randy's gonna stay here and be our security guard in camp keep things held down you guys have a good day be safe out there and should maybe find some baby morels today that would be nice wouldn't it here we go way up on the hill over there on the far side of the valley across from our camp there's fresh snow not so good for the mushrooms Need to warm up here. It's supposed to get cold this week. We're just trying to find this burn, and and it's not very accurate to the fire map. But we've stopped at this government campground, and there is a water fill up. So we're gonna take advantage of that. So we we're just trying to find the way to this burn and we found this little pull off. It was really hard to get off the highway here because they, there was just some recent flooding three days ago. So they regraded that whole section of the road and it was all really soft shoulders. So we couldn't pull off. Finally found a spot. We've come down this little road, uh, but we might be on the wrong side of the creek. So we're just going to boot down here and see what the creek looks like. And then uh, if it's crossable, we'll come back, get our gear and then, and then hike right in. And clear these trees out of our way so we can drive down here. There it goes. Yeah. So luckily a lot of the water is being controlled through this culvert and this is just the flood zone around it. So we can definitely cross this here. Okay, we've parked down by the creek here. We're all geared up, GPS, bear spray, all that. Mosquitoes are bad down here, which means it wasn't as cold here last night to kill them all off. And that might mean it's warmer here than the burn near our camp. So hopefully we'll find some morels. <laughs> the section of the road after we crossed the creek, we're heading up this way. Um, you can tell that it was recently cleared, probably when they fought this fire. And then we come across a old hose here that they've left in the bush. So that's definitely from fighting the fire. So we're gonna try walking this old fireman's trail, see if it takes us to the burn. If it does, that's pretty convenient. You can see the burn way in the distance. Pretty cool trail to hike, really. Definitely able to pack board down this if we get to burn. If this fireman's trail wasn't here, we'd still have to go through this bog with all this water and this muskeg, but we'd be going through that with no clear bearing. So this is a lot more convenient, but it's like walking on snow. The road has turned into a stream. My foot is pretty wet already. A helipad here. There's the landing pads. We're getting close to the burn now. Val VC, Rocky Mountain, July 15th. Okay, that gives you an idea when this fire burned. That's important information. When the fire burned often dictates when the mushrooms will start. July 15th isn't too late. This burn might start pretty soon. So it is a kilometer to the top of the hill and it goes from 545 meters at the bottom to 760 meters. It's like 600 feet-ish, depending on where you come up the hill.
Take a look at this burn. There's a morel. First morel of the season. There it is, little baby. Dude. And there it is. Woohoo! I'm gonna leave it actually. There's another one. As soon as we entered the burn. Good eye. Good eye. Pretty happy to see that because we've checked a few burns now and it's been too early too early found some more one two three four this is what we wanted to see three right there and this is a good looking flush already we will be back here in four days to pick these probably if the weather cooperates and got that nice little fireman's trail to walk there's another five in a line six including that one so seven. Look, there's a really small one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now when we came into the burn here, we, we said there's a good chance it'll be further ahead than by our camp because there was dandelions flowering on the roadside. By our camp, they hadn't even started flowering yet. So that told us it's at least a week ahead here. And sure enough, we walk in morels right away. It's awesome. These are just about ready to pick. A little bit of weathering on them, but they look good still. We like to let them grow because then you get more mushrooms. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we've traveled 3,300 kilometers just to get here. And then we've scouted a whole bunch of burns once we were here in the Yukon. And these are the first morels we're finding in the season, so it's pretty exciting. They're hard to see, but if you count them really closely, there's 50 within a seven foot uh, radius. Look what we're in, spruce and trembling aspen. And this is right on the edge of a runoff too. Yes. Right, right about halfway Where through the opening. From the top. Yeah. It's got more... Mossy, oh, notice how mossy this going. There's almost none in this part of the mm -hmm. ocean. Beauty, eh? Whenever you're picking a burn, you're always looking for patterns because every burn will fruit differently. Yeah, and yeah. it's all about finding the pattern on that burn and then following it. That's the best piece of advice we could give somebody who's learning to pick fire morels. As Randy would say, morels are where you find them. If you're unfamiliar with morel picking on forest fires in Western North America, they grow the year following the forest fire mainly and there's five different known species they come in two different waves there's the early fire morel species and then the late fire morel species so right now we're seeing a mix of the early species the mycelium is the organism these are just the fruit of the organism like apples on a tree i'm going to pick this one it's a souvenir to take home to randy back in camp nice it's one of the reasons we take our stems off go all the debris is on the stem so I'm just gonna get rid of that. <laughs> now we are talking. And it bubbles out in all directions. Yep, comes all through here. Woo! Mm -hmm. First morale's in the bag. Mm -hmm. We've come out of the Blackburn into where there's half burnt, still alive trees. These can be some of the best spots. And the mushrooms are a lot fresher here. Almost always they will be protected from splashing soot. What do you see? I see morels. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at this. And we're here just before they're ready to pick. We'll be picking morels this week. Oh, look at the fire cups here too. Oh, look at that guy. Pick it. I'll pick it. Nice. Yeah, the fire cup is really 
is like the furthest along the scene, eh? Yes. Here, yeah. If you followed our channel for a while, you probably know this isn't that many morels compared to what we're used to. But early in the season like this, after not picking them all year and traveling all this way, it's about as exciting as it gets. Potentially a good sign for what's to come. But it keeps going. So we came way in the distance. You can see the highway where we came from. Check it out. This little morel is growing on its own out in the leaf litter outside of the burn. The lonely morel. So it's another big flat like the lower one and then we get into another big transition zone on the main hill. That's going to be good. Right where it meets the far hill over there is going to be loaded. Awesome. Woo! Nice. You may have seen in one of our previous episodes here that we had a huge sudden rain, flash of rain, really hard rain. All the larger mushrooms in these blackened areas got a little bit of soot that splashes up on them. We call that ash splash. Um, so the second flush hopefully comes in cleaner, but the needle zones where there's needle top trees and green trees, they'll be protected. So we need to focus on those for clean mushrooms. Big flushes of babies. There's a ton of babies here. That one, leave that one and that one. Take, whoop. Take this one. You see them all? Nice. Pretty steep slope here too. They go all along this whole hill. Actually over there looks even better. Look at them all. We don't want to pick them, they're too small. Only enough for dinner tonight. But we do want to get to the top of this big hill and see if there's a nice flat up on top. So there's still quite a climb to do. Okay. Woo! There's some big ones. Mountainside morel harvesting here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot. Nice pocket over here with some medium sized ones. So, in this spot like this, there's more than 150 morels. They're all quite small still. It's a really good showing. That was about a six or seven hundred foot climb. I'm about to turn around and show you the view. It's pretty spectacular. You can see the whole Tintina Trench. And there's like 70 baby morels right here. Wow. It's beautiful. Down there somewhere is the helipad. And that's the Stewart River in the distance. You can also see a huge old burn way in the distance over there. It burned four years ago and over 100,000 hectares on that far burn, whereas this one here is only 4,000. Yeah, check it out. They should be in focus. So this looks like a forest fire spider footprint, an old boot print that's overwintered. Right there, heel, toe. So we're very close to the very top here and there are some morels starting up here. As we went up the hill and got to the top, they're definitely further behind, which you'd expect. So there is some serious spruce trees up here they're quite a good size and some nice trembling aspen but it's definitely not starting here yet up on the top so this little hillside could be a section that burned 30 or 40 years ago and then has regrown to this size 
Yep, yeah, that's nice. So it's very inconsistent burn. It's a tough hike. I'm down here and there's nice morels right there. No, it's pretty steep. So way over there, there's another helipad. So we're using the binoculars to look in there and we can see a stack of firewood and some orange spray painted rocks. We're pretty sure that's another helipad. And to, to pick this side of the burn, we're not, we're not crossing this. So we have to pick it as a separate harvest from that side of the ravine and the creek. And that might be our access point right over there. So we could do this whole side in one day or a few days, and then that whole side from there. But we still need to find how to access that helipad. Right around there, there's a little street coming down the hill through the green. That looks like another fireman's trail we can work with. There's berries in there. There's some green juniper berries. We want these the following year when they're purple. So next year you can come back and all of these would be bluish purple. It's loaded. They're all through here again. As soon as we hit the southern exposure, they're all through here. Big sack of morels for dinner. Not that many, but happy to find them. Way up on that hill, that's where we were sitting when we saw this, this fire break road. So here's one of the false morel varieties. We call these brain mushrooms or gyrometra. And you do not want to eat these. They, are, they do contain toxins, so we avoid those. If we were to go this way, we need to get to that section of burn on the far hill over there. I think this will be the helipad. There's the orange rocks over there. Heli landing right here. Fireman's trail again. So that'll be another day. So we're gonna head back to camp now and go tell Randy the good news and then make some dinner. Woo! Two nice paths to morels. Awesome guys. Home sweet home in the middle of nowhere. Hey. How you doing, eh? Good. What do you think of these, eh? What are those? Morella! There's babies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a few morels we picked today. And we're going to rinse these off because they had a bit of charcoal splash on them. And we carried them in a mesh bag so they got beat up a little bit. No, normally we don't use mesh bags, we use buckets with holes. Still spreads the spore. So you can see, carrying with the mesh bag, even though we only had a few, look at how the gills got rubbed off. You know, they just got, they roll around in the bag every time you go up and down and they get beat up pretty bad. While we were out there picking morels and scouting, Randy was out here near our camp picking fireweed. We've been eating this all week. So he weighed up a bucket of fireweed and it actually weighed seven pounds fresh, which is quite a bit. Look at that. It's drying nicely. And it is the safe to eat variety. You wanna get the right type when you eat fireweed. Every part of this variety of fireweed is edible, including the flowers. Salad.
So there we have it. We have fried morels and butter, mashed potatoes and carrots, mm -hmm. steamed fireweed shoots, the, the new tender ones that just come up, a salad with dandelion, the mixed green spring salad with cucumber. Dinner is served. Like Best way to taste the actual mm. flavor of the morel. Mm. Oh, oh damn. Oh. Almost lost my dinner there. Now go away. <laughs> Our cold water goes in first so we don't melt the bucket. It's a little bit colorful because we got it from a campground. And the hot water goes in. We pull it up. Perfect. Woo. The day is done. Thanks for watching everybody. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that uh, helps keep the cameras rolling. It's pretty tough running these cameras out in the bush sometimes, dealing with batteries, and uh, we don't have electricity out here, so burning fuel to be able to uh, recharge our, our batteries, so. Really appreciate you all watching and we'll see you in the next episode.